Okay, I thought today we'd give you just a little bit of update on our sweet corn, and I think we'll plant the last of our new corn, that uh, SV9010, whatever it was, um, that you saw in the previous video. I think in one part of the camera here, you can see the first three rows we planted, some weeds in there, we just got that sprayed, where you know, they'll be taken care of. And then out across here, you can see the next 12 rows that we've planted. I think if you look close, you'll be able to see some of it shooting right up through there. The conditions were not perfect and are still not perfect. Um, we got off bad start here weather-wise. It's just been wet all spring and we've continually worked this ground too wet. And really one of the first mistakes was plowing it at all. Um, we should have just come in and you know tilted as lightly as possible this spring and then worried about that next fall. But I actually think we'll end up with a better garden this way. It's just very painful to deal with. Around here, most of the farmland is plowed or any of the primary tillage, we might call it, the deeper tillage, is done in the fall. And the reason for that is that in the spring, then, they want to do just light tillage so that they don't bring up this wet, we would call it muck. This ground holds moisture really well. And that's a good thing in the summertime, but in the spring, it makes it really difficult to work. And that's what we've experienced here. Lots of small clods, then it gets hard on top because it was mucky when we, when we tilled it and everything. So we haven't got a perfect stand, but we're gonna have sweet corn, I believe. So we gotta put some fertilizer on it. I believe we'll have enough that we can eat. <laughs> I think we'll have enough for the neighbors too, hopefully. Yeah, uh, and the raccoons. And the deer, probably. We'll have to, you know, we'll take care of that. Later episodes, hopefully, we'll show you putting our fence up and just, in general, try to keep you updated on this. I didn't get a good view for a little while. This wheel wasn't turning. I hope I hope the other one was. Yeah, I think it was. Pretty dry looking on top, but if you dig in there just a little yeah. bit, it's muddy. What do you think? You're a corn planting expert. It's all right. it he guesses it's all right. I don't think that's a uh, ringing endorsement. Did you dig down in there and see if you could find one? Oh, there was one. There's moisture down there, see? Oh, yeah. That's probably deep enough, and there's moisture. I, I, I still have trouble having a lot of confidence just because it's so dry and hard on top and, you know, so much muck underneath. It's, it's something that I'm not used to. You know, we just didn't have this kind of soil in southern Illinois. And even in Carmel, 15 miles away, the soil was different. Well, we'll see how we get along. Got a corn. Yeah, there's still some in the shoe there. And there's an example. I've talked about the shriveled kernels. It's very difficult for a finger pickup or even an air seeder to be able to plant those consistently, and certainly difficult for an older plate type planter. These humps make it really challenging for that planter. Note the press wheels come off the ground right there. That's four more, isn't it? I guess we could wait and do one more planting. Folks, a lot of people on YouTube are always saying, well, if you just grow the right cover crops, if you, if you treat your soil right, you won't need any fertilizer. Well, that may be true if you don't want to grow corn. But if you want to grow corn, you gotta have fertilizer. And I'm sure my father-in-law would agree with that. Yep. And the follow-on is, my father would say, corn loves nitrogen. So there's N, nitrogen, P, potash or potassium, and K, phosphorus. I need to get a shake of head from my chemist wife back there to make yeah, sure. I uh... think that's right. So we're putting 12, 12, 12 on right now. That means this is 12% nitrogen, 12% potassium, 12% phosphorus. This is what we would typically call starter fertilizer. Corn needs a good amount of P and K, potassium and phosphate, to get going and grow good. So we're gonna go over it once with this. Um, on my family's farm, they would end up putting probably 400 pounds per acre of not 12, 12, 12, but of overall fertilizer. And then they would come through and side dress with even more anhydrous ammonia, which is 82% nitrogen, I believe. So, but to start out with, we're gonna put this 12, 12, 12 on here. 
I'm not sure how much we'll put on. It depends on how our little spreader is set. The net here is, if you want to grow corn, you got to use fertilizer. This is quite the contraption you're using to... Uh... I picked this up. Actually, I didn't even buy this. Neighbor Bob bought it years ago. And when he decided he didn't need it, he said, Tim, you can have that thing. Now, this has got part of his uh, remote controlled rate control contraption on it, but I took part of it off because it didn't fit my tractor. He used to pull it with a zero turn and he had about a 10 foot pipe that ran forward from there that he could reach from his mower. Unfortunately, I can't reach it either, so maybe I'll have my camera lady come along and turn it off for me. Maybe. <laughs> now, there's another thing that makes this particular unit not entirely suitable for spraying over the top of corn. There's a gearbox right under the center of this thing. And so I'm going to try to drive just slightly off center of the row because I don't want that gearbox tearing up my growing corn. Not near heavy enough, is it? And that's all, that was only 40 pounds. We've only used about half, only put about 20 pounds on, haven't we? Probably. We'll just do it again. I wish I had a handle I could do. I hate having to make you guys run and do that. I just can't reach it. Yeah. Better off now. Bobby, I think we're going to have to come up with a better remote control mechanism. You're, you know, you... Yeah, you ran out the new one. <laughs> Let's go back to the bar and see if we can invent something so I can control this. Right. What do you think? Okay. Sounds like an idea. Well, we were thinking maybe something here to, to get this stuck up here and up toward the front, right? So I could right. reach it. I don't think I've got any PVC. This one's a little short. If we had a little longer and an elbow, it might work. Yeah. I could try to rig up something temporary. That would work. You know, this is one of those things you jab in the ground, see if... Uh -huh. Hopefully you use that before you hit the pipe. Yeah. But I, I wonder if that would work. I, the tape's already gone off the end here. I wonder if I could just run it in here like that. Take it some tape. And... Yeah, but try it one time, because not only do you have to push it back, you have to crook it into that block. Yeah. Maybe I should go to the other side with it. We could try that. It looks like soda. It looks like what? Soda. It was nitrogen. It was called soda back in the day. This thing came out while I was driving down through here, so we'll see. If it does again, I'll have to tape it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, okay, this isn't working very well. Maybe I can get by with it for the rest of this application, but I think I'm going to have to have a better solution. I do think my not spreading alarm was working pretty well. I could hear that pretty easily.
leaning around like that was giving me side stitch. Or, well, something like that. Well, maybe not the most efficient nitrogen application you've ever seen. It's okay. You can see it down the road. Yeah, we got some out there, don't we? Yeah. I guess we could have used this approach. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Too. <laughs> some people say rain makes grain. I believe that, but nitrogen grows corn. Don't let anybody tell you differently. You got to have nitrogen. Now, there is some truth to the idea that a legume, a soybean or a clover or something that, 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 that is a legume, will hold some nitrogen in the soil. And that will help the corn. That's one of the reasons they use a corn-soybean rotation here in the Midwest. Soybeans are a legume. They put nitrogen into the soil so that the corn can consume it. That alone is not nearly enough nitrogen to grow corn. So, at least to grow good corn. So make sure if you're growing sweet corn, use nitrogen. Bobby, thanks for being my mule, as you called it. Okay. And uh, we'll still have to work on a better design for this, I think, in the future. I got to get something to be able to turn this off and on without yeah. some help. Yeah. But this little spreader is fine. You don't always have to have some hugely expensive device to get the job done, and this is a perfect example. These lawnmower attachments that have a really short tongue, they don't work very well on a subcompact tractor, but we do have the heavy hitch two inch receiver with a two inch receiver drawbar coming out of that. That extends the drawbar at least a foot, maybe even longer from where the tractor normally is. If you look back to some of my old spraying videos, you'll see that I had to take the quick hitch. I even had to take the three point arms off to be able to use it connected to that original little drawbar hook there. So that heavy hitch, uh, receiver hitch with extended drawbar really helps it if you have you know regular lawnmower attachments to use like a a little lawn roller perhaps, or a, a, a dethatcher, a fertilized spreader, maybe a sprayer. There's a lot of little attachments that you could pull with a lawnmower. And that's the way you use them with these kind of tractors. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim.